Okay, so I'm going to show you how to solder the ESP8266 Wi-Fi module onto the Esprino Pico, either the pinned version or the unpinned. Um, you do that via one of these little ESP8266 shims um, that you can get from Tindy. So this is the old shim. Um, as you can see, uh, it would it would fit on here, but on the pinned version, it's just like um, it's a bit too big to go in without actually taking out the black plastic. So the new version. Um, fits in much much more, more nicely. Now you may find that when you get yours it's a little bit too thick there and you might have to just sand a little bit down with a, a file, nail file or even um, a craft knife um, and then it should fit quite nicely in there. Um, obviously on this one, the unpinned, you won't have any problems at all um, so I won't cover that for now. So you take this um, you make sure that the text is on the bottom and the 8 pins are on the top and it goes on that way. You need two little bits of wire, you want one of them bent in a U shape and you're going to put the um, put that through the two pins on either side there. Um, then you just take this, make sure it's the right way around and then just slot it onto those go quite easily and that will kind of align everything quite nicely so that you don't have to worry about what these are doing. You want to take that final one and um, and just place it through the middle. So it might take a little bit of fiddling but there you go. Um, so make sure that's all nicely together and then we'll, um, we'll solder it. Now you probably want quite a fine tip to soldering iron, a fine tip solder for this, but it's not actually that hard hard to do. Um, it's just a matter of getting in from the right angle. So that's done. Um, you can then cut these off at the top with some side cutters. check that there are no shorts on there um, and then do the same on the underside. The underside is a little bit easier because the pads are wider um, so as long as you just leave the soldering on, iron on for a while it will make a nice connection. Finally check that this is flush with um, those, those pins there um, and then you solder along. Now you don't really um, You don't really have to worry too much because it's it's actually quite hard to get the um, to get the solder to flow across multiple pins. Um, but what you want to make sure is that there's you can see solder actually on the tab and you can see it on the castellation there, um, and that it's very obviously connected the two together. Because realistically, you want all of these connected. For instance, that one doesn't seem to have very much on. So just put a little bit more solder on there. So now that's good. Um, here we have space for a um, a capacitor, which can kind of it can help if you're having problems with reliability on the ESP8266, because when it is transmitting, it draws an awful lot of power, um, and sometimes it's it's hard for the voltage regulator to keep up with that, especially if it's powering other things on 3.3 volts as well. Um, if you're drawing a lot of power on 3.3 volts from other things, you might want to put another voltage regulator in there. Um, but generally, you can get something working quite happily just by placing the ESP8266 module in like that. Um, so you want to place it so that um, you have room to press the button. Well, so that it's resting against the button and then it's flat. Um, because then you can just flex it very slightly and you can activate the button. Um, it's very hard to get this right first time, so what I suggest doing is that you you actually put in just um, a single a single pin at first, and obviously you can see it's moving all over the place. But you can you can then just adjust it quite carefully by hand, just by remelting it um, and making sure that that it is the way you want it. Okay, so that looks good. So um, when it says you want it, you just solder along here. Um, I would suggest only soldering these these four initially. Um, 
and then go in with side cutters um, and cut them all out and then you can get him to do the next four quite easily Oops. get that on properly now if you mess this up which is kind of easy to do and you see there's a little ball of salt in there you can usually wipe it off quite easily with the, the solder iron, um, but you can use a solder sucker, which is one of these, which will suck the solder out of the joint, um, or you can use something called solder wick, which is again quite easy to get hold of, um, but you can just put it on, and if you melt it in with the um, tip of the solder iron, it will actually wick up the solder. Um, and it's, it's very handy for doing surface mount stuff. So that's the um, ESP8266 module shim done. Um, you end up with a really tiny nice little module. Um, obviously you want to trim those pins off. Um, but it is breadboard friendly so you can um, you can stick it straight into bits of breadboard. Uh, the only thing to note is that say this is a new module, the old module, the new shim the old shim is this one. Um, this shim brings out a few more pins on the ESP8266 which will allow you to reset it if the ESP8266 were to crash or to um, put it into deep sleep modes. That means you need a small amount of extra software to set the pins to the correct state before you start using the ESP8266. So check out the Esprino website, specifically the page on the ESP8266 for details on that. Thanks for watching.